Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. Go to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Uh, so day 10 takes us to around the 27th of uh, March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that instead of GFS and ECM ensembles. Have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video uh, for the next uh, four weeks. That will take us into the middle part of April, uh, of course. Oh, I should get on that for you very short. Just say that the first video released today uh, was the USA forecast. It was on a Wednesday. We have a look at weather uh, for the United States for the 10 to 14 day time frame and beyond. Actually, a lot of a focus on that one is in the next few hours because they are going to be in for a very, very severe and significant tornado outbreak across uh, southern states. So if you're interested in what may be happening uh, in America in the next few hours, which could be pretty severe, then uh, have a look at the uh, USA forecast. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Uh, right, so the uh, 11K subs grind goes on. We're currently standing at uh, 10,766 seven subscribers so uh we're putting on a few subscribers every day it's quite uh you know quite a quite a low level of subs that we're putting on but he's encouraging that we are still putting on subscribers this time uh last year the subscribers actually went into reverse we uh we started losing subscribers uh, uh quite a quite a few days uh you know uh, in uh, spring last year so so we're managing to put on subscribers at a lower level than we was back in winter of course but you know still quite encouraging uh, I think. If you aren't yet sub to our channel, please can you give us a sub. Make sure you tell your friends and family to subscribe uh, to Gaz Webbies as well. We're going to get ourselves to 11k subscribers as soon as we can. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Things will start accelerate as we get towards uh, the summer. But uh, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for all of the support. Right, so uh, let's start off uh, with the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast uh, chart then. So the black line shows where we've been with the AO, the red lines at the end where GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. So uh, we find that uh, for most of winter, the Arctic Oscillation was in its uh, in a negative uh, sort of uh, setup. Maybe it's just an index that's reflecting atmospheric state. It doesn't drive anything in its own terms. just tells you what the atmosphere is doing. So, so when the AO is negative, as it was through most of the winter, uh, we have high pressure uh, blocking uh, within uh, the northern latitudes and over the Arctic. Around the middle of February, the uh, AO went into a positive phase. It's generally stayed in a positive phase since. So quite Quite clearly, uh, the, the Arctic Oscillation flipped in the middle of uh, February from uh, negative to positive, And we are now in like a prolonged and protracted positive period. Uh, we do get a few days where we go back down uh, towards neutral. We're actually in one of those at the moment. But you see again, the Arctic Oscillation is going to lift off in the coming week or so. And then possibly, uh, as we get towards the end of March, begin to move back down uh, towards neutral again. So a little bit up and down, but the, the trend is very much... Uh, within positive territory. This tells us that we still have, uh, you know, have quite a lot of low pressure over the uh, Arctic and we are reverted away from the blocking scenario that we have through most of winter into something much more classically uh, westerly, uh, if you like, especially when we look at the NAO as well. So again, black line shows where we've been with the uh, North Atlantic Oscillation, the red lines at the end, where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the North Atlantic Oscillation to go. So once again, you see through most of winter, the NAO was in a weekly negative uh, phase. Uh, we have entered into a weekly positive phase now, although right, right now, today, the uh, NAO is around neutral. But the GFS ensembles are forecasting that the uh, NAO uh, will stay in a uh, neutral to weekly positive state uh, through the next uh, couple of weeks. So if both of the indexes in like a positive uh, scenario, in a positive phase, then it tells us that we continue to be set up for Westerlies. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be unsettled. Actually, I think you have quite a lot of dry weather because high pressure will be uh, taking over from like the Azores high. And that's going to bring quite a lot of dry uh, weather with it, but should often be mild. So uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Norwich. We're starting off quite cold at the moment. The next couple of days are going to be pretty chilly, but as we go through the weekend into next week, we're going to find the upper air temperatures lifting up, and it will become mild. We're going to have a proper, I've talked about this in videos over the past few days, going to have a proper sort of spring-like spell of uh, weather coming up uh, next week with the upper air temperatures going above average. The surface temperatures should lift up into at least a mid-teen Celsius. And plenty of dry weather. Hopefully there'll be sunshine. That's a big unknown. Of course, we might fill the high pressure up with anticyclonic gloom. 
but in theory, if there's quite a bit of sunshine, it should be very pleasantly spring-like through the weekend and into uh, next week. And a lot of dry weather to come as well. Not completely dry, there will be a few little showers coming and going, but essentially this is very, very dry ensemble uh, for the next week anyway at uh, Norwich. As we move towards the end of the month, end of March, possibly a little bit more unsettled uh, then. But, but I think we're looking at quite a lot of dry uh, and pleasant spring weather uh, in the next uh, week to 10 days. Temperature anomalies from the 17th to 25th of March is going to be uh, milder than average in many parts of the country, especially central northern areas. The far south and southeast will be closer to average. Most parts of Europe are still looking really quite chilly, really cold across many parts of Europe with significantly below average temperatures in the week ahead. But, but we're uh, Ireland, UK uh, and, and uh, much of Scandinavia in the very, very far north, northwest. Um, you know, just on the periphery of that cold weather and managing to keep it at bay. The precipitation and looks very dry as well. So the 17th to 25th of March, precipitation only going to be significantly drier than normal in uh, most places. Latest wind flow map from EarthNorthSchool.net shows that high pressure will be dominating, uh, or is dominating the weather at the moment, will continue to be dominating the weather in the coming days as well. The centre is just to west of Ivan, so we are bringing down something of a chilly northerly wind down the eastern uh, coast of the country. But having said that, many places are pleasant under this area of high pressure. And the high pressure is still there on Saturday. So Saturday will be dominated by this large anti-cyclone sitting over just to the west of the country, bringing plenty of dry and fine conditions too. Into Sunday, the high pressure just slips to our west a little bit, may allow a bit of a front into the far north, northeast, might bring a bit of patchy rain with it. But I think the emphasis is still on a lot of dry weather for the weekend. Into the early part of next week, again, high and dry uh, sums it up really, particularly for England and Wales, those are dry and you would have thought pretty mild weather temperatures into the low to possibly mid-teens uh, Celsius if there's some sunshine. Does look like it's turning a little bit more and settling in the northwest by Tuesday. So by Tuesday we perhaps just start to bring some showery rain in towards northern west of Scotland and maybe into uh, northern Ireland as well. Uh, GFS looks like that success. So again, the high pressure dominates the weather through the UK and Ireland on Saturday. A lot of dry and fine conditions. So maybe bringing a bit of a front in from the northwest on Sunday might bring some showery rain uh, with it. Then the high pressure re-establishes as we go through Monday into Tuesday. Again, the emphasis will be on dry and fine conditions. A little bit of showery rain in the far northwest of Scotland, perhaps by Tuesday. As the air begins to drift up from the south, it should get uh, warmer through the Opad next week as well. I would have thought 15, 16 degrees is on the cars, perhaps, for southern and eastern parts of the country by Tuesday. Afternoon. Wednesday should still be mainly dry for England and Wales, some showy rain in Scotland and Northern Ireland. And then the second half of next week, perhaps turning just a little bit more unsettled as some lower pressure begins to start pushing in from off the Atlantic. So moving up towards day 10, looks like it's starting to turn not only cooler but also more unsettled with some bouts of rain beginning to head in. Uh, from the west. Beyond day 10, the GFS 6A turns very unsettled with low pressure just to our south southwest. So, in case of showers or longer spells of rain as we start moving up towards the Easter period. Although, as far as we get to today is to, or if GFS is to Friday the 2nd of April, which is Good Friday, of course, by then the high pressure is taking over again. Just to our northeast, winds are coming in from like an east southeast direction that could bring a lot of dry and quite warm weather with it uh, for 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 east. But of course, it's like two weeks away, more than two weeks away. Um, so so it's uncertain. It's uncertain, of course. But that's what GFS it said. We'll begin Easter updates this weekend. By the way, as uh, as Easter will be in the. Uh, full time frame of the GFS uh, this weekend. So, so watch out for the first Easter updates to come uh, very soon. Uh, this is how the uh, GEM is looking. So, again, plenty of dry weather uh, on Saturday, sitting over to the west of the country and into the Open next week. High pressure uh, fest continues, especially so for England and Wales, possibly a little bit more and south in the northwest by uh, the middle of next week. Into the second half of next week, again, low pressure is moving in from the Atlantic, bringing increasingly heavy rain and strong winds by day 10. So there is a bit of a change here within the 
on the out output. You know, a bit of a change of thought for the second half next week to something uh, uh, wetter and more sound and possibly rather cooler as well. Not as well, not cold, but certainly second half next week might turn cooler and more unsettled. Though it is all still like, like a way off. It's over uh, a week away, of course. And then the ECM uh, looks like that. So high pressure, once again, is dominating weather over the weekend and into the open half next week. There will be plenty of dry and fine weather on offer. Into the second half of next week, again, same idea, possibly turning a little bit more unsettled. Although the ECM is a bit different in that it starts to raise the heights to our east and north. It just begins to turn the wind a little bit more towards the south east. Should still be mainly, uh, should still be, uh, mainly on the mild side. Winds are coming up from the south. But it's not quite as unsettled uh, with the ECM today the lower pressure is being kept at bay out in the Atlantic so so a lot of dry weather to come through uh, many parts of the country up day 10 with the ECM but the other models are turning things unsettled around day 7, 8, 9, 10. This is how the precipitation type forecast looks based on that ECM run so there will be plenty of uh, uh, dry weather to enjoy over the coming days not continuously dry there will be showery bursts here and there but the emphasis is on dry weather really over the next uh, week to 10 days. So yes, spring is properly commencing here. Uh, these are the options on the table in the ECM Ensemble today for day 10. Gets us to the 27th of March. 20 members of the ECM Ensembles have high pressure towards Scandinavia. Uh, low pressure is to our west. So it's going to be a lot of dry weather, of course, if that winds will be coming up from like a southerly south direction, plenty of dry and mild conditions. 19 members of the ECL ensemble is a little bit more unsettled. Lower pressure coming in off the Atlantic, higher pressure towards the northeast. Uh, that does include the operational uh, run as well. So, so just a little bit closer with that area of low pressure. But this is the most unsettled option. Uh, the 12 that we have just here are bringing the low pressure in off the Atlantic, similar to like what the GFS and uh, the GM are showing. So that is obviously the most unsettled option. In two weeks' time, uh, which is going to get us to the uh, 1st of April, these are the options uh, that we have uh, today. So I uh, have 90 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure in off the Atlantic. That's going to be unsettled and quite cool. 17 uh, just here with low pressure over to the east of the country combined with a mid-Atlantic ridge. That could be quite cold and unsettled. Winds coming in uh, from more of a northerly or northwesterly direction. And 15 have high pressure up towards Scandinavia with winds in from an easterly direction. That could be the driest option of course we may be seeing some signals here but around the uh around the end of march beginning of april it might get more sad of course this is moving to to the easter period as well Finally, CFS V2, uh, these are 500 millibar heights breaking down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 17th to the 23rd of March. The coming week, as we've already established, is dominated by high pressure. So a lot of dry and fine weather to enjoy. Week 2 will be the 27th to the 30th of March. Again, with loads of high pressure dominating the weather over the UK and into the Atlantic as well. Low pressure is up to the north, along with the jet stream uh, as well. So, so a lot of dry and fine and potentially quite warm weather uh, to enjoy there I would have thought week three also dominated by high pressure 31st of March 6th of April no real change to unsettled conditions here for CFS uh, instead we just have a lot of high pressure domination continuing and then lastly, uh, week four will be the 7th to the 13th of April. High pressure then covering much of Western and Northern Europe as well. So we could, well, if this is right, we could well be entering into a long-term sort of anticyclonic high pressure type pattern, which will mean that spring uh, continues to, to, to develop, I suppose, and uh, a lot of dry and at times, I suppose, quite warm weather to enjoy even into April. We shall see. Right, so if you enjoyed the video, please can you smash your like button, make sure you subscribe to our channel, you'll see future weather content if you do that. Tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. 
It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much uh, for all of the support, support to each and every one of you. Right, so that's it for uh, today's uh, videos. Tomorrow, you're going to have the European Outlook. And uh, we'll also have a 10 to 14 day video update, as always, for you uh, tomorrow as well. Uh, for this one, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching. Don't get to check out the USA forecast. Some very interesting weather going on uh, in America. Much more uh, livelier than the weather we've got coming up. Uh, so have a look at USA and see what, what they've got across those southern states in the coming hours. It looks very, very, very volatile uh, indeed. Right, so that's it for today's videos. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Bye for now.